There's a universe inside each of us. The Innerverse Podcast is your portal to that infinite realm of ideas. I'm Chance Garten, and I'll be your host as we serve up inspirational sound waves from the brightest minds with the highest vibes. And we keep searching for the empowering perspectives we need to create our greatest masterpiece of all, our lives. Welcome to the One Within All to Another Innerverse Adventure. I'm your host, Chance, and this recording is coming at you from the 13th of March, Friday the 13th, actually, in 2020. It's a weird time right now as we watch more and more panic and pandemonium bubbling up about this international virus situation and events or gatherings we might have planned to attend are being canceled left and right. But hopefully in today's show, we can bring the festival to you by having a long overdue conversation with the legendary Midwest festival live painter and extremely amazing personality and powerful psychedelic priestess of shakedown streets everywhere, the one and only Stacey Pants. On top of being an overall excellent person of the highest reputation in the alternative culture scene, Stacey's been rocking the self-made artist lifestyle for several years now. And as a friend of hers, I've had a lot of personal enjoyment from watching her style evolve and her popularity grow. Her highly colorful and supernaturally cartoonish paintings are just my kind of bright, And her work pops off the page with a neon immediacy and one-of-a-kind flair. And I'm glad to say that I own a few of her awesome posters myself. Stacey creates a variety of amazing things from murals and handmade costumes to interactive installations and toys. Like that big colorful rocking horse thingy that she had at Backwoods Music Festival that one time. Which just about everybody at the festival rode at least once. If I recall correctly, the slogan for that sculpture was, Be the strange you wish to see in the world. And that's a motto that we can definitely get behind. Last month, I ran into Stacy at an event she helped put together where a slew of gnarly artists got together with some equally awesome musicians to throw a shindig at Elevate Rock Climbing Gym in Harrison, Arkansas. It was a pretty epic event to combine some of my favorite pastimes, like enjoying art and music while running around doing ninja obstacle courses and climbing routes. Anyway, we finally set down a date to do this podcast, and I've definitely been looking forward to it. But alas, since this is an audio show and I can't make you look at Miss Pants' awesome artwork with your ears, I'll have to remind you that you can take a moment here to look up stacypants.org or find her on Instagram or Facebook so that you can enjoy the eye candy of imaginative insanity. Give her a follow, and if you like what you see, support her with a purchase or at least a friendly comment or share. And it seems like this year, independent artists are going to need the income from online sales possibly more than ever, since just about every mass event that one might sell their stuff at early in the festival season is getting corona canceled. So hopefully we can bring some positivity and smiles to you lovely listeners in this super strange and stressful time. And if you like Interverse, I'll remind you that there's a ton of bonus content available for subscribers on Patreon, which you can access at patreon.com forward slash Interverse. Check the show notes for links to sign up to that and for links to Stacey Pants' beautiful internet presences and for the notes on all the stuff we're going to talk about in this episode. And now it's time to dive in with our guest today. So take a deep breath or 30. And if you're a bit freaked out about anything, remember the proverbial truth that this too shall pass and look at everything you can as an exercise in learning to let go and go with the flow. And also, please join your telepathic powers together to transmit a warm and welcoming feeling to the multidisciplinary artist with plus 20 dexterity, the fairy queen of funky flow states, and prolific painter who's immune to haters, the supremely prodigious Stacy Pants. Thank you for being here, Stacy, and welcome to Interverse. Oh, hey, everyone. <laughs> that was an awesome introduction. Thank you so much. It's so awesome to finally, finally get to grace your show. I'm really excited. Well, you've been much requested, if I must say, especially around the time whenever I'm telling people what I do at festivals that we're both at. They're like, you should get Stacy Pants on there. She'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, you're actually the first one to, to pin me down for a podcast. I've only done like some interviews for some magazines before. So here I am. Here's my voice. <laughs> well, like all fairy folk, you're a bit hard to find in the time space continuum since you float around from place to place so much. Am I right? Oh, yeah. It's yeah. I'm I'm everywhere on the map. It just seems only recently have I actually settled down, but I still pop up everywhere. Well, so let's talk a little bit about, you know, the journey of young Stacy to becoming the well-known personality in Midwest Festival, Stacy Pants. Like, you know, where 
where did you start realizing this was like the the thing for you to do? And what was it like getting to where you're at now? Yeah, actually, my pretty first significant experience with art was like at a pretty young age. I was always drawing, but I remember like being outside and like drawing in a, a notebook and like specifically I'd drawn a princess and I was like alone and by myself and I drew something to like completion with no one's help. And that just seemed to be such like a significant feeling that I'd like completed something and it was like mine, like my idea. And I just felt like so fulfilled and so proud and like no one could tell me that I did good. Like I knew I did good. And that was like definitely a pretty, a pretty amazing force for me to feel. And it's something I've just chased ever since. I think that like my art has always been like a way to feel things that are happening around me or like my own emotions that I, I always feel pretty loudly. Um, it's something I never thought I would do professionally though. That's for sure. I've had a, I've had a lot of people tell me, you know, to like stop drawing in my notes or like, you know, you're never going to make it as an artist and stuff like that. So I've done quite a few other jobs before I did, you know, like my art professionally and like nothing else. You know, I was like, I did coffee jobs. I even worked as a dog groomer for a little bit, but I had always just done my art on the side and kept at it and wasn't really expecting anything out of it. And like the more I did my art and the more I just kind of put it out there, the more people responded to it. And I think in about uh, 2012 or, or it was 2013, I did my very first live painting. I got invited to live paint at Artopia at 2720 in St. Louis. And I had completed my first live painting and like sold it that night too. So it was like a, a pretty, a pretty awesome feeling. And I just kind of kept doing live painting more and more often and just continued to talk to people. Um, and just kind of kept at it, you know, but it was one of those things that like, I never once again thought I would do professionally. It's just something I've always been really passionate about. And eventually I started making more money off my art than I did other jobs. So it just made sense to like quit my job and just go full-time art. And now I'm, I've been doing it successfully for, this is going to be my fourth year now being self-employed. So I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, that is a milestone that a lot of us hope to make it to. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of you. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. So I guess you would have to say that the point in time where it's right to put everything else aside and just focus on the art on a vocational level as your, you know, only income source, that leap is a is a weird bridge to cross, because I think for every person, it's in a different place. And I Wondered if you had any advice about that transition and about, you, you know, the probable likelihood of insecurity in that time and th the, the difficulties that might arise. You know, what what is that like? I don't even know if the insecurities go away, you know, <laughs> it, it's still it's still, you know, there's still like the times where I go, I go, you know, a month or two without selling a painting or getting any custom work in and, you know, I start thinking about getting a job or something like that, but I just have faith that like, it'll pull through. And I always like, I think my biggest bit of advice for people like trying to get into like selling art professionally, like is actually ironically don't try to do it for money because the more you try to do it for money, the more like stressed out you're going to become, the more unfun it's going to become, the more it's just going to feel like, really awful work and I think that's really going to show in the art and in your attitude and people aren't really going to want it I think that like the people who do the best are truly the most passionate and just like would are they're not going to do anything else you know like that's just truly what they're meant to do and money will follow but you know whenever you do art everyone just like you can always find ways to take care of yourself with food and shelter too so money's only part of it yeah I'm sure that the community that you get to be integrated into whenever you're following this type of passion has got a lot to do with making it work. I mean, it's almost like the subculture all support each other in a way that is maybe the only reason why it's even possible. Oh yeah. It's definitely, it's so much of that. I, I think like my, my biggest currency is in connection and human connection and like other people helping me and me helping them. And like my art enriches a lot of people's lives, but like so many people enrich my life too. And I think that's like ex extremely important, like more important than money really to me, but money is still nice. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, especially coming up in this weird year that we're experiencing, uh, money is going to be more of a money and resources are going to be more of a survival thing than ever. It looks like, I mean, of course there's possibility that this weird stuff is going to more or less blow over, but you know, it's just amazing how fast things went nuclear (laughs) and it's good that we do have communities. I mean, you probably know, multiple farms that you could go crash on and like help help with as the as the spring starts you know happening and the ability to at least grow our own food comes back right i feel i feel very lucky for that i definitely know multiple people who've planted their gardens and i I feel blessed to be once again in a community that's more about each other than like separation and money and i just feel like it is going to be a very interesting time but a lot of us are pretty lucky to be around each other and have each other and it will be tough, but it's, you know, it'd be tougher without each other. That's tr- so true. And it's a historical fact that crisis situations actually bring out the best in people as much as they bring out maybe the worst in, it brings out the best in individuals and in relationships. A lot of the time, the mass is where the the worst comes out in the, <laughs> the giant crowds. But, you know, we definitely have an opportunity to, make good on a lot of the connections that we've got. I remember someone, I think it might've been Michael Garfield, but said something about making it as an artist was more about increasing the number of potentially serendipitous connections you have with other people. That's like (laughs) the most, that's the most valuable thing to do. Definitely. And I feel like with festival season, like, you know, kind of, shutting down for a little bit, the money's going to, the money loss is going to suck, but almost what's going to suck more is like being able to reach out in person and connect. But thankfully there's such a good online community too, that like we're still able to reach into. And, you know, it's interesting, like how we're kind of forced back to tribal roots right now, but we have all these like technological advances that still can help us feel pretty connected. Yeah. Like what we're doing right now. <laughs> yeah, I know, and there's like festivals that are being held in VR and stuff like that. I had not heard of that. That sounds kind of cool. That might just be a thing that starts happening on the regular with even without a virus. I know. Yeah, I really hope so. Cause that's a whole new level of like just art and social exploration and just so much could be done with that. It's some pretty future, future stuff there. Yeah. I have this dream of like me as a old man in a VR world of that's been created by myself and like guests of the show and people that listen to the show and everyone's got like murals and it's kind of like Minecraft, but prettier. (laughs) And that's like, we can meet there to do the podcast and we'll just be like sitting in a virtual office, looking at each other's avatar while we talk. (laughs) (laughs) I would be, I would be Garfield though. (laughs) You would just be Garfield. (laughs) Well, luckily we're not talking on a Monday if you're Garfield. (laughs) I hate Mondays. (laughs) And I guess you love lasagna. That's now something we know. I do love lasagna and I hate my cute little cousin cat. Not about it. I'm the (laughs) cutest. Uh, That's great. And if we were going to start exploring these new futuristic mediums like virtual reality, the technology, like you said, is getting more and more accessible. And I think that there's other applications that can be done with that, like I've seen at festivals, people bring VR headsets and show a presentation on like the life, the day in a day in the life of a free range farm animal. Oh, wow. Stuff like that. I mean, it's kind of heavy. That's like a a less fun way to do VR, but we can definitely bring awareness to a lot of stuff with the ability to immerse someone completely in a situation that they otherwise would be separated from. Yeah. So many people like, don't know until they're in that situation and it's so jarring to you know i think experience a situation you usually wouldn't and then be put back into your regular reality and it's like what's still happening somewhere on this rock (laughs) (laughs) kind of like the coronavirus panic itself actually we're being sort of forced into watching the world around us change in in the panic and stuff and like i was telling you before we hopped on that i went and finally just decided to get with the program and stock up on a bunch of food. And it's true. There's not, there's not a lot of toilet paper available, but at the, the health food store that I go to with like organic food, organic produce, they still had lots of toilet paper. Cause I guess 
that's not where you go to stock up on that. I don't know. I was good to go. <laughs> yeah, I saw somebody post about using coffee filters. There's a there's a tip in case anybody's like me and just was already kind of out of toilet paper and then this happened. And now you're really out of toilet paper. <laughs> Yeah, Festy kids already know how to deal with that problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I like part, parts of the year I spend camping out of my van in national forests and it ain't, ain't nothing new to me to dig a hole. You know, I think that's just so interesting that a, a virus kind of is forcing us back to primal times. And like how, how many people are kind of excited for it and really embracing, embracing kind of the chaos and other people are just really adding to the chaos. It is weird. It does bring out the deep-seated beliefs of people, this type of a situation, whether they have a lot of hope or they have a lot of fear, you can definitely see it shining through. And like even even people that are normally pretty balanced or seemingly balanced are now like the weirdest thing about this is how everyone just parrots the talking about this situation to one another. And probably very few of us have done the any level of deep enough research to be sure we know what's going on. Like my, I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm not going to pretend like I do. I just see what the people are doing at the stores. Right. And even like the statistics I feel like we're getting are still coming in. So like, how can you, can you believe anything? Right. I just feel like it's, it's, it's definitely a wild time to be alive. And I, I don't, I don't mind having friends that I love and we can all hang out and just self self contain, you know, yeah, absolutely. The, social distancing is the word they're using, right? Like that that's such a sad sounding word <laughs> or phrase. <laughs> yeah. The real thing that I would expect is that people that have already got a pretty decent level of health are not in any immediate danger, most likely, other than like shortages of toilet paper. Right. And that connects to a theory that I have about creativity in general. And I was wondering your thoughts on this, which is that the focusing on improving one's health on in all spheres, mental, physical, and spiritual is actually like a pathway to increasing your ability to access the imagination. Have you experienced that? Yeah, I definitely, I would believe that. Sure. I mean, like trying to clear up your own pathways just so you can start understanding like your own inspiration or like how you see the universe or your own opinion, you know, like art is art is a conversation with what's going on around you and like your explanation of it. So I think you kind of have to like know where you're at, I, I would believe, or at least be on the path to figuring it out. Art can definitely help with that. Yeah. It becomes a reflection of what's inside you. And if you do have a lot of gunked up systems, then it comes out more blurry, I guess, less well-defined. That's my experience with it. But I have not made nearly the volume of art as someone like you. So I was curious what you thought. And if, <laughs> if uh, you know, that's another thing about being a traveling person too, is whether you're a performing painter or a DJ, is that sometimes those events require a lot of energy out of you, like a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. People are pretty, oh my gosh. Yeah, those events definitely take a lot of energy out of me. It takes a lot to like kind of be on stage and happy and trying to talk and interact with everyone and making sure they're having a good time. But it takes a lot of like water out of your own bucket. And oftentimes I have to go back to my own van. I have my van made up like pretty comfy and I spend a lot of times isolated and by myself at festivals too, or I just don't need to like be around people to just kind of take some time to be by myself and not be so overstimulated and trying to make everyone happy, but just kind of taking a second to be quiet and calm and collected and drink some water. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely good advice, especially at festivals. Never can really drink too much water. And yeah, that that's a a mature attitude to take towards the music festival experience, I think. A lot of times whenever we are newer to it and it's really exciting and there's so much to do, the desire to do it all definitely can lead you to burn yourself out and get the wook flu. <laughs> I, I was very, very guilty of that for the first few years I was doing festivals. But as I got more serious about doing live art, I also love to volunteer just in general, helping the festival work. The more I just started doing stuff like that, the 
the less like overstimulation I wanted and the more like genuine, like I found the genuine experiences, like the things that really made me feel fulfilled, not like stimulated just for a night, but something that like really lasted. And I found that like through doing live art or creating installations for people to enjoy. Like actually right now I'm kind of stepping away from doing live art and getting more into installation. Live art was and still is a lot of, um, you know, like just projecting and giving people energy and talking to them and making sure they're having like a good time and wanting to know more about them and stuff like that. But really I want people to have a good time. So I, I want to start getting more into installation because now I can create these containers for people to have fun and for people to like truly kind of find parts of themselves. Um, instead of me having to do like the vocal work, you know, like I can bring out the inner child with a giant rocking horse, you know, and like that inner feeling of play and something that's going to stay with somebody for a little bit instead of doing live art and having to talk and project and worry about finishing a canvas or if it's going to rain or like what's going to happen and stuff like that. Or can I really stay up all night and do this painting? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. that's a big question. Yeah. And the cool thing about the installations is they can be planned and put together in a more preemptive manner. So you have you have actually probably more that you could spend energy wise on the finished product because you can spread it out. And then in the event itself, you could like sit back and enjoy that instead of having to be constructing it while juggling all those other balls and socializing. And because you are a very nice person and very approachable. And so I'm sure that anyone that comes up and is getting into whatever you're painting, you're going to want to talk to. Yeah. It's probably nice to have LaFonda right there. Just have yeah. him jump on that. <laughs> LaFonda yeah. is the rocking horse, right? Talk about LaFonda, please. <laughs> yeah, LaFonda is great. I, uh, it just wants, like, I just feel like so many adults have missed out on their kid side. And I feel like a big part of everyone going to festivals is trying to play again or find some innocence or something unexpected or something like just to do that's fun. and. I always loved tearing around playgrounds as a kid and I like still love playing on playgrounds. Honestly, it's a lot of fun. And I feel like we stopped at some point. So I wanted to make like something that was so giant size that just felt comical. Like how could you not get on it? But it's still like strong enough that it could support two or three hippies, like really trying to push the boundary. <laughs> <laughs> she is never falling over. I watched a lot of people try to rock her over, but she's never fallen over. She's, and she's been going strong for three years and I've been wanting to build a few others. And hopefully this, this backwoods this year should have a new one coming out, but still working on that. She's a sturdy steed. Yeah, definitely. She's, she's a weird one. That's for sure. I'll definitely put a picture of LaFonda linked in the show notes because people should check that out. Just look in the notes of as you scroll down on the episode description and you'll be glad you checked it out. Yeah, I just feel like we we all miss out on play, you know, and once we start playing again, I think these more innocent sides of us come out, these more honest and real sides of us come out that we lost kind of a long time ago and people told us to stop and like go inside or whatever. For me, I totally get what you're talking about because I got the idea that I was not creative somewhere in school. Like I liked to draw when I was young and then at some point I just stopped and had this belief about myself that that's not something I do or I can do because yeah, it doesn't look like what other they, people do. I don't know when they put that in kids' heads, but it's, it's, it's terrible. And I, and I meet so many young artists that just don't believe in what they're doing. And it's heartbreaking because like art's just so important and we need artists. We all are artists internally. Like we all really want to create or make or express. And I think whenever that like, I don't know if it's fear of judgment or fear that you're going to fail, but there's just so many fears that hold people back. But ultimately it's, it's pretty sad. I think creation is, is so within all of us. When people tell me they can't even draw a stick figure, I'm like, I can't draw stick figures, you know, go try, go try woodworking or go try singing. Like there's definitely something people can do. Just living is an art, honestly. I totally agree. That's your greatest masterpiece of all is the, your life itself, the whole thing. Yeah, I, I meet a lot of moms who tell me that they wish they could paint. I'm like, I wish I could have children. <laughs> I don't know how you do that. That's amazing to me. So, yeah, that's that's a crazy creation right there. Definitely out of control. Yeah, that's wild. 
I think one of the secrets is that artists have figured out is that you just do stuff. Like you just pick something. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be anything. It doesn't have to be perfect. Definitely doesn't have to be like what someone else is making. And the, the person that says they're not creative is actually more just like indecisive. Right. I think it's uh once you break away from the idea of like creating an actual like end product and you can kind of just get lost in the art of creation. I think that's where like really the the joy is of art is just doing it. So many things I do don't actually like have a an end I like idea in mind, but I'm just doing it because it feels good. And then like some cool stuff will come out of that. Some won't, but a lot of it, I'm just kind of guessing. It just feels right. Yeah, you do a lot of stuff besides just painting and the stage stuff. Do you want to talk about some of the other interesting things that you cobble together and anything about that process? Like, how do you get the inspiration? Where does the inspiration come from to make a crazy costume or something out of something's bones? Hmm, I like I always quote like cartoons being my biggest inspiration just growing up. I watched so many cartoons and I read so many comic books and I still do. So I think like my brain just thinks very cartoony. So I I like to pick elements of reality from around me and just kind of distort them or like things that I was fond of and just kind of like really amplify it. I'm also extremely inspired by my friends and like my friends specifically who are musicians. I love to work with musicians and I love to draw my friends, even if they don't know I'm drawing them. I like kind of see their character and they're just like these weird, you know, crystal collecting wizards or like this like very cat like girl and like all these people just have these really interesting personalities that I adore and I'm really lucky to know. So I love to kind of bring those into my art too. It's a big inspiration. Yeah, that's back to the community thing that it's a not only a sort of safe place where we can watch out for each other, but there's this positive feedback loop of, wow, are you doing that? How did you do that? And you can really learn a lot just by checking out someone else's process. That's for sure. Yeah, it's wild. There's just so many, so many creators and innovators and people are just like just being cheerful, like all the time or just blow my mind. There's so many of them. Yeah, we definitely have a good squ- artist squad at places around the uh, Northwest Arkansas Festival circuit. <laughs> it's a lot of them have been on this show. Yeah, so I always find it's interesting too. It's not; it doesn't seem to be an uncommon theme for like a lot of these people to kind of come from like broken homes or like weird childhoods, or like kind of people are seeking community or a sense of family because they were kind of lacking it. And I just feel like I've definitely found like kind of a weird family that like cares about each other because they haven't had that before. And they know like, it's pretty awesome to have it now. Yeah. And a place where you can express the inner child kind of, as you've been saying that if you didn't have a very safe childhood, then you definitely had to put away that sort of whimsy and there's no real need for that to ever go away. It doesn't make you less safe (laughs) it actually makes you stronger so in a way you're more safe yeah but you have this slogan on la fonda be the strange you wish to see in the world where where did you come up with that (laughs) it's actually something i just saw on the internet but it's something i've always i've always loved because everyone like i don't know i think change is weird and people are gonna think whatever 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 is new or kind of ahead of its time people are gonna think is weird and I was just always kind of the weird kid. And I know a bunch of people who are just kind of the weird kids, but they're, they're definitely like making the world change by their weirdness. I think the strange is what's saving us in in the long run. The quest for normalcy is, wait, I don't know. It's not good. (laughs) It's a waste of time. Yeah. And it's self harming too. I mean, what is normalcy other than that? I feel comfortable that I'm like most other people. I don't know what else, how else to describe normalcy i had read this book recently and it put uh, a feeling i've i've had to words really well and that's like each of us are like i mean the world has a need and there's a reason why we're here like in the world needed our like really unique solution but like in order for us to have like our unique solution to offer i think we really have to like strive for our own authenticity and like in that can kind of feel weird or like in acting weird 
you just kind of start finding yourself. And I think like the world specifically needs each person and like each solution. And whenever they're trying to like fight who they really are is when they're like really start robbing the world of like the solution and like whatever it is, like we need them, like we need you or we need the people. Yeah. And your personal solution or your personal streak of individuality it doesn't mean that it has to be something nobody else is doing to be valid either. That's another thing to to realize that we're all taking pieces and parts from everything that we see and experience and that other people have shown us and making that into our personal uniqueness. Definitely strength. Strength in numbers is really good. Definitely. And uh, the other thing about the inner child is to just run around and play and climb on stuff (laughs) and not let yourself feel like this stiff straight backed uh, grown up or whatever. (laughs) Although most grown ups that I see are not straight spined uh, actually, (laughs) but you, you had this elevate uh, shindig. I wanted to talk about that a little bit because I had such a good time. I might have got the sweatiest of everybody there. (laughs) <laughs> oh my gosh yeah i i think i might still be sore from taking down that show that was a really fun one though yeah what was that like give a little verbal painting of that incredible place and that amazing night to the people who are just listening yeah so the inspiration of that night kind of came between conversations uh between me and jamie seed who's an amazing photographer who i know has been on the show before But we just kind of talked about how many people are just kind of getting burnt out on these events that, you know, like festivals are a lot of fun, but there's kind of the underbelly of people being on substances or being drunk and just, it's not fun for like people who are just trying to stay clear headed and enjoy the event and make connections and listen to some music and stuff like that. So we just kind of wanted to throw an event that just seemed like less stimulation and more fun for people. So we uh, elevate um, the person who owns that is an absolute sweetheart and he let us throw a show there and it seemed perfect because it was just you know like it's it's a giant playground it gives people other stimulation rather than them seeking it out and just trying to like create a nice container for for everyone so we decided to like make the focus more on the music as well as uh, or sorry <laughs> we decided to make the focus more on the art instead of the music because there's also just so many good painters in the area that I don't feel like I've had a platform that I just really wanted to help give a platform to and give some confidence and they all did absolutely amazing they pulled each of them pulled a painting out in like a week and a half for the show which is actually pretty difficult so I'm really proud of all of them and then the people who played music um, just kind of got to do something a little more experimental and like down tempo there wasn't like as much pressure on them or as many lights so they kind of got to have more of a relaxed time um we didn't charge admission on this one because it's kind of an experimental event too but we did raise money for house of hope which is a homeless shelter in harrison arkansas we raised like right over 400 like with people just tossing money like when they came in so that was pretty cool and unexpected as well for like an event with only 100 people showing up it was just, it was really nice. It was just overall the evening went so well. And I just saw so many people like actually talking and getting to know each other a lot better. And I think a lot of people are just excited because it was in Harrison and not a lot goes on there. So it just ended up being like a really special, like small, intimate evening. And I just want to start curating more events like that around the country for people who are like trying to be sober and just want to hang out, but also like, I don't know, just want to hang out. <laughs> Yeah, just try to create better events for people. Well, it's an admirable cause. And I was definitely one of the people that benefited from the work you guys did putting it together. I I was feeling pretty cooped up in the house in January and February, as is pretty normal, and was extremely happy to run around somewhere colorful. That gym is like the McDonald's play place that you wish you had, where instead of it all being plastic, it's mostly wood and everything's colorful, every color imaginable. There were artists up in these like lofts high up and underneath weird tunnel systems and lots of rock climbing holds to play around on. And our mutual friend, the incredible artist, Brandon Arnold gave me a handful of crystals to go and hide in the tunnels, which was pretty fun. (laughs) 
Yeah, he's amazing. And I really liked the music too. There were lots of artists I hadn't heard before. And this one duo of an older guy and a younger gal were quite incredible early in the night. There was a particular moment where this is always an awesome moment if it happens where the music all of a sudden made me like have an epiphany. <laughs> yeah. And the guy's lyrics were something along the lines of every day plant a seed and pull a weed. And that's like in the garden of your mind or in the tasks you have to do in your life. You know, don't don't just do the bare minimum. Plant a seed for something new. And if you can pull out or let go of something that is no longer serving. And it was just this awesome epiphany moment. I love when music does that. Yeah. It conveys messages to you that like you just can't hear any other way. That's so good too. I love I love the idea of just kind of living life a little more open. The more things you get rid of, the more room you have to bring in new things, you know? Yeah, because at the end of the day, we're like these energetic containers where energy is just passing through us. We don't keep anything permanently. So that's the metaphor of being the gardener of your own mind, of your own life always has been an apt one to me. Yeah, there's a there's a Chinese proverb that's it's kind of along the same lines about like this man and who lives his life with his his hands closed and then the man who lives his life with his hands open. The man who lives his life with his hands closed like never loses anything and the man who lives his life with his hands open is always losing everything and people kept calling him a fool but what they don't realize is like he's always gaining new things and while he's losing things he's always gaining new things and the man who lives his life with his hands closed never gains anything new because he won't let go of like these old things. And that's something I got told kind of at a younger age that I've, I've tried to hold on to because life is constantly shifting and taking things away from you. But something new is always coming in, I find. Absolutely. That's great. It's a great attitude to have from a, a young age because sometimes the more that we double down on security material security the more it weighs down on us like owning property owning a lot of stuff now if you want to go somewhere and do something else you got to figure out what to do with all this stuff or right. even pets are that way i mean regretfully so i love my pets but i have to figure out what to do with them when i go somewhere <laughs> right yeah they got to be comfy too it's like i've lived it's interesting now because i've i've lived a, a good chunk of my life out of cars just kind of having having a weird life and Un instability leading to live, living in cars and clinging to my art. But now I've, you know, I, I traveled everywhere and I got to see so much cool stuff living out of my van. And a lot of people are like, oh, I wish I could do what you're doing. But I'm like, man, I wish I could have a, a steady toilet. But this is really <laughs> cool, you know. But now that I have a steady toilet, I'm like, man, I miss the mountains. <laughs> and, you know, I miss I miss all this other stuff. So I think when, when you have one thing, you're going to want the other. But there is something definitely to be said about traveling light and just accepting when things kind of hit, have hit their mark and it's time to go. Right on. And as long as I've known you, you've been in a bunch of different places for a spell here or there. Like, wh where are some of the places that you've lived in a s somewhat longer term uh, stint? <laughs> Yeah, let's see. The last place I lived for a while would have been Denver. And I had moved out there because the art scene is just so phenomenal. And it still remains to be that way. Uh, it's just, it's happening out there for the culture when it comes to music and painting and people like really trying to push themselves and new techniques and so you can paint the biggest mural and stuff. People are just really getting it out there. So I was inspired to live out there for a while. And it definitely made me a lot better of an artist. Rent is just really expensive. So I came on back. My mom got sick too. So I came on back to Missouri for a little bit. But now I'm settled into Arkansas and I hopefully will be here for a while. I live at Terra Studios, which is actually pretty awesome. They like got famous for blowing these blue glass birds in 1975 and they've been open since. And they recently stopped blowing the blue glass birds because of the greenhouse emissions or their carbon footprint. So that's cool. They're kind of making these changes. But yeah, I'm out there for now. Uh, I've also lived in like briefly, I lived in Hawaii in a van for like a, a good season. And that was a huge chunk of my life that still like just taught me so much. Yeah. Other than that, I'm from St. Louis, though. So I've spent quite a bit of time up there, too. 
it would be pretty cool to spend a few seasons in Hawaii. I admit to jealousy whenever I'd see like what you're up to on social media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, life definitely has washed me up on some pretty beautiful shores. For as all the all the weird places I've been, I've definitely been to some pretty beautiful ones too. I went to I went to Peru, and I think that was probably the most like terrifyingly beautiful place where everything's just so alive and it's just so different from what I've ever seen culture and people and the food transportation, just everything. It's awesome. Yeah. Going out of country is a good way to get out of the comfort zone for sure. You know, one thing that kind of came up when you were talking about the elevate event that we were on a minute ago was the sobriety thing and being clear headed thing. And this is a great point maybe to talk about because I've noticed, especially I, I used to have this opinion whenever I was just getting interested in the scene and in, in art and all this stuff was that there's this assumption among the, I guess the lay people <laughs> that the psychedelic use is an important tool for every artist that has any <laughs> strain of visionary in their art and like that you must be on something all the time in order to even be a successful artist. And like the more that I am buckling down and working on any craft that I've ever had, the more I wanted to be clear headed and like retain as much energy as I can and not be fighting some other thing that's trying to take over my consciousness. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I, I have so many people like constantly assume that I must be like high or something when I'm painting. I'm like, man, this is the one thing that makes me feel calm in the world. This, this is, you know, also my job too. Like you don't go to work high. I don't want to go to work high. Whenever I like, whenever I get in that like zone, I, I don't even want to paint, you know, I want to go do other things. But I've known some of some of the best artists I've known you know, they, they don't, you know, like people, this is just their passion. This is their life. They've had, they've had time to look inside, you know, they've had, I don't, I don't really know how to put it. You know, it's like they, they didn't have to, to take the ticket to like, you know, do the ride. I get what you're saying. There's a lot of artists that maybe never even used psychedelics and people would, I guess, not believe it because of how incredible the transmission is from the imaginal realm. But on the other hand, it's not like psychedelics are the enemy or anything. It's just that right. and a lot of and I'm sure many artists can attest that they've had doors opened in their consciousness through the use of plant medicines that is inspired them for years to come. But it's like it's not something that needs to be a crutch. And it's actually back to the health thing going to have consequences if it was a crutch. And it definitely would affect the, you know, the work that you're doing, if you, especially maybe like on a business end, if you were never really in a clear headspace. I feel like also maybe those people who, who might think that, you know, all painters must be, you know, on some kind of substance is the people who, you know, who have tried and experimented and stuff, but those are the times that they finally felt creative. You know, I feel like those are the times they finally feel access to their creativity. Like now they want to get creative. So that must be when everybody else wants to be creative. Right. But I don't think that's the case as much. Um, I definitely agree though. Like psychedelics open so many doors for like a whole bunch of artists, myself included. But I think at one point you just kind of hit the ceiling and you kind of have to like accept that you hit the glass ceiling and like the universe is kind of tran transmitted a whole mess of knowledge to you, but at some point you got to start doing it yourself too. And I think art can be such a, such an amazing tool for that. But I, I feel like, you know, trying to create these events that are, you know, more sober events and stuff like that. It's just trying to create spaces for people who've like kind of already had the party and they're kind of tired of the party and just want to hang out. We all found each other like on those trips and uh, all these crazy events and all these crazy nights, but I don't think we need to continue like the crazy nights in order to like hang out and just kind of want to create other places where we can just hang out with all the craziness. I think that's a, an apt description and really it's just a healthier thing to not have a purely hedonistic mindset. And that's the festival scene is admittedly super hedonistic in the way that it's, uh, you know, the way that most attendees treat it. But 
It can also be a rite of passage. It can be a spiritual experience, just as especially as creativity can be that the person that does go for just the party has at least got a chance of waking up to the fact that, oh, I don't need to have I don't need to have this or that to be this happy. I don't need to be on this or I don't need to be at this place to be content with myself. I need to figure out what it is about myself that I should change or let go of to make me feel that content all the time. Uh, to quote Michael Garfield again, who's an amazing live artist, actually. He is amazing. He he has this really cool article about how festivals themselves are actually a symptom of the societal disassociation that we have. I would I would definitely agree with that. Like, you know, like once again, I feel like so many people come to festivals seeking connection or seeking stimulation because, you know, like just the normal life is so it's so distancing and lonely and jarring. So they come to festivals to like meet connect or like, you know, meet people or make connections or be stimulated or feel, you know, obtain this thing. Like they feel that they're missing, but in, in the long run, if they just like chase it too much, kind of end up burnt out and just not in a good mood or out a lot of money or something. Turn into a wook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we love wooks. I'm just kidding. That's the very ambiguous term. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's a good analysis of it that uh, I guess my question for you is, what do you think are some ways that a person can bring that magic home, you know, and make their make, quote unquote, the real world more like the festival world and community? Well, of course, I'm going to suggest art, but like, of course, art. I mean, I think there's so much so much exploration that can be done through art i mean in interacting with other people we're exploring ourselves and i think through interacting with art and having a conversation with the universe or whatever it may be you end up having a conversation within yourself um i think that's like a really good way to bring the festival home Uh, i think just also i mean there's so many good musicians out there that like don't get the attention because everybody's just looking for the headliner but trying to like stay invested in your community. There's so many ways to stay connected online. The internet is like such a blessing if you use it right, but there's so many amazing musicians. There's so many other painters or content creators who are like constantly putting out stuff and like the progress of this or that. And I think that's a really good way to stay connected. But ultimately I think just reaching out to, you know, your friends is the best way to stay connected to the festival community. That's something that I've, I can fail at, but, I've started this new thing where I have to hit at least one of my friends up every other day and tell them that I love them. And I'm thinking of them and I hope they're doing good. Like, there's just a lot of people that I've met and haven't seen in a while and like really miss, but don't tell them that I miss, but I see them all, like I see them on the internet all the time, but I don't tell them I miss them. So just trying to get more into the habit of like actually connecting and being like, Hey, I love you. That's great. <laughs> I could definitely take that advice. Someone else has given it to me before too, that, if you're going to be driving for more than 10 minutes, maybe consider just hitting up someone you haven't talked to for a while and seeing how they're doing. Cause I'm, I'm guilty of staying in hermit mode and it's not cause I don't like everybody. It's because actually I love everybody so much that, that I feel the love and the connection with them. Even if we haven't talked for a while, that's just like, so, it doesn't bother me, <laughs> but yeah, I know. but making that effort can lead to, synchronicities that you wouldn't have even had otherwise you might hear about something that you might not have known about otherwise right exactly actually one of my friends who I haven't hit up in a while I decided to hit her up but I had to hit up another friend first to get her number but in hitting up this other friend who he's somebody I met randomly on the beach in Hawaii I found out that like they're opening a concert venue on Big Island now and they might need some murals. So like that wouldn't have happened if I wouldn't have like went to hit up my friend just to tell her I love her and stuff. So that's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, you never can go. You never go wrong, even if there's not an obvious reward at the end. It definitely just feels good. Yeah, definitely. And they're just I don't know. It's it's an intense time. If, in, if anyone hasn't noticed, like I would definitely tell people you love them right now. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Let me just make this status update. I love you, everybody. Love everyone listening. <laughs> well, very cool. And so tell me more about, you know, what what you're looking to do with the uh, 
next coming months and you know, are there any events that aren't canceled yet that you've got coming up that people could see you at? Well, so far Backwoods hasn't been canceled, so that's cool. Backwoods should be really neat this year. I've they approved me for like the most I've ever been approved for a budget for doing installation. So I've got like a pretty big area that I'm building for it that I'm really excited about. And uh, other than that, I think right now I'm doing flux, all the flux campouts in Greenbrier, Arkansas. And then Sonic Bloom. Every year I usually work Sonic Bloom in the art gallery. And it's always one of the, like, probably my favorite one of the year. Because I get to meet artists from all over the country and out of this country. And it's just people who are super, super dedicated to what they're doing. It, like, consumes their whole life. And they've been doing it for, like, 30 years usually. Or, like, something like that. These people are really amazing. And it's, like, an honor to work with them and just be able to hang out. So other than that, though, I'm not sure. I'm definitely taking the self-quarantining pretty pretty hard right now. I'm just hanging out with a few people here and there, but just avoiding events, you know. I got plenty of paintings that need to be worked on. There's a stack of books I haven't read. There's just all sorts of good things that I actually don't mind getting to. But it's kind of nice to have a little bit of more postponement and break. Well, this has been super amazing, Stacy Pants, and what yeah. I always hoped for was a fun, rousing chat with you about all these things and more. Yeah, thank you so much for providing space for it. I'm, I'm glad I did this as my first one, so this is pretty cool. I appreciate it. I love being the cherry popper for people's first podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know of a better. I don't know a better phrase than than that. That's not a very good phrase. Your first though. <laughs> this is my voice people know now <laughs> real i'm not a robot i swear super real but where can they find you in robot land you know how, how can people connect with you would you like them to contact you in any certain way i say the absolute best way to get a hold of me or like really follow my art is i have a facebook group actually called stacy pants party and I do like most of my updates through that group, but I also have like a Facebook business page um, that I update or Instagram is pretty popular too. My Facebook is Stacy Pants Design and then my Instagram is Stacy Pants. Um, you should just be able to look it up and I'll show up. Yeah, you're probably the only Stacy Pants on earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know well, technically there was a Stacy Pants who got my Instagram name. So my Instagram name has a Z for the pants, but like it'll show up. <laughs> okay that's a good caveat i'll link all that in the show notes though and people can find you and hopefully drool over the beautiful art and leave some nice comments and um, make you feel validated <laughs> Please do. i love validation <laughs> thank you well awesome thank you so much for your time today and we'll hang it up but it's been awesome all right thank you chance have a good day well, my friends, we made it to the end of the episode, and I got to say, it always feels good to get to this point, and especially when I'm crossing somebody off of my podcasting hit list that's been on there for a long time. I've wanted to pin Stacy down for an interview for probably just about the whole time I've been doing the show, actually. I'd have to say she's one of my all-time artist heroes out there <laughs> because she's from the area region around where I'm from. And when I was just getting into opening up and getting out of the box and coming off of the college indoctrination and trying to find out who the heck I was and what I liked and what I was interested in, her artwork was definitely something that made me stop and think like, man, I kind of want to do that. And I admit, I definitely don't do what she does to that level, but since then, I have made some art, and it's been fun, and and I've remained inspired by her personality and her extremely prolific portfolio for the whole time that I've been doing Interverse, for sure. And maybe the reason why we haven't actually found a time to do an episode is just because she moves around a lot, and she's a tough target to track. <laughs> but it was really good to have this time to speak, and... Ultimately, the original sort of intention for the show was to be a lot like this episode where I'm talking to someone kind of in the music festival world or the transformational arts, visionary, psychedelic, art, creativity type of realm. And 
trying to extract the type of information and ideas that can be most inspirational out of a personality like that. So I really loved this conversation. And I think Stacy did a great job of making us all see once again that we're all artists in some way or another. And there's nothing stopping us from doing the thing we want to do, except maybe, I guess, the fear or the false belief that we can't do it. And I'm sorry I had to bring up the whole coronavirus thing as I did, but it does seem relevant, especially in the world of the traveling professional artist who makes a lot of their funds at events like big festivals that some of which are being canceled right now. I definitely hope I didn't create any kind of like extra panic around this because the real pandemic is the panic, if you ask me. And I might do something soon to try to take the edge off of the fear for anybody that wants to hear about it with maybe, I don't know, like a live stream video or some kind of shorter Corona public service announcement or something. So we'll leave that thread for now and not talk about it anymore here in the outro. And instead, I'll talk about how Stacy Pants's story really exemplifies the going with the flow and the universal synchronicity that you can tap into whenever you start following your creative passions and making that your number one priority over the money or the survival or the security. Of course, we have to keep those things in mind. We can't just let ourselves die, but Stacy does do a good job in this episode of exploring and explaining how her life has been seemingly led by some kind of divine timing and unpredictable magic. I really loved what she said about life has washed me up on some beautiful shores. And of course, that excellent slogan of be the strange that you want to see in the world. I think that definitely makes a lot of sense. I mean, the real change is strange and it doesn't necessarily mean that to change the world, we've got to go and be the fixer of everything that's going on on the planet. Instead, we should just like fix ourselves and put ourselves in the best place we can be and get ourselves in alignment with the grand flow of everything. And that seems to help other puzzle pieces fit into place as well. It's why I would consider art to be the number one universal spiritual path, which is something we did start to talk about in the plus extension. If you didn't catch the plus extension because you're not an Interverse Plus subscriber, remember that you can do that at patreon.com forward slash Interverse. Very easy to sign up. And then you've got access to like probably getting close to 100 extended episodes, if I had to guess. I mean, it's been a while since we started the plus train. And although people aren't joining as quickly as maybe I would hope because (laughs) I'd love to have more support. I'm happy to say there's plenty of you out there that are getting to hear those excellent, excellent extensions where we go deeper and further into the reaches of the mystery and we tell you all the secrets of how to be exactly perfect and happy. Well, maybe not, but we do get to talk about more stuff that you wouldn't hear in the first hour, of course. So think about going and signing up. There's no other way that this podcast gets any kind of reciprocation. If you like what I do here and you think that I should keep doing it professionally, Well, that would be up to you then to make that happen by becoming a member and showing some love, you know? So in this plus extension, we talked about art as the universal spiritual path, appreciating the mystery of life more than needing all the answers. Stacy gave advice for getting into the festival world as a live artist and talked about why you might want to avoid art school, the importance of working on yourself in equal measure to working on your vocation and your creations creative labor, and the alchemy of magical manifestation, which that kind of goes into the art as a spiritual path, following your bliss in the form of using your imagination to do the things that seem most fun and exciting to you, regardless of what might be the outcome. That's what leads you to magical manifestation, I would say. She definitely breaks that down in a great way for us. We talked about our shared love of comic books and why we like them and a few titles that Pants is into. Talked about connecting to our past and future selves and meditative and visionary states to share a loving perspective. Talked about the new images of the superhero, different types of diversity that's creeping into that particular set of parallel universes and how cool it is to see different types of people represented as the heroes and not just the same old boring stuff. I mean, Batman's fun, but we've had Batman and Superman for a long ass time, right? 
And on the superhero topic, we talked about the Spider-Verse, which I love that concept. And we kind of explored a little around that. I had fun with that. The appeal of archetypal apocalypse stories then came up because that's pretty popular in comics. And then we discussed cultivating the flow state, which is getting out of your own way and letting yourself really enter into the creative frame of mind and just make shit without worrying about shit for as long as you can. And then we talked about setting healthy social media boundaries. Of course, there's other stuff we got into in there as well, but I can't tell you the entire plus extension. It'd be hard to summarize it all and kind of pointless because then why'd you go listen to it? So maybe go listen to it if you want to know more of what we discussed. But that's about it, guys. I had a fun time this week, as usual. Got more cool stuff coming up. Good things on the calendar for the next few weeks. But hey, if you want to hit me with a guest suggestion, someone that you think would be a great Interverse podcast candidate, hit me up at chance at interversepodcast.com or just hit me up for whatever. I'd like to hear from you guys. You can also drop me a line on social media, comment somewhere, whatever you like. But let's be more interactive because <laughs> one of the things Stacy talked about was making sure people know that you love and care about them by getting in touch with them every once in a while. I'm pretty bad about that. I just kind of like hunker down and do my thing and don't really worry too much about what's going on with people even that I love a lot and want to talk to. And I just let my interactions with them come as they may in the real world, more or less. But that also turns into me not doing a whole lot of interacting with you guys, the audience. And that's sort of my Piscean seclusion or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and I want to maybe be a little less secluded. So. You can help me out, do half the work for me, hit me up, say hi. I'd love to talk to you about the show or anything. And you can tell me feedback. You can make suggestions, whatever, man. Let's talk. And I do love you. So that's me telling you I love you. And I'll tell you again soon because I do. And I'm going to play us out today with John Teal, an awesome Arkansas-based DJ music producer. I think I've played John Teal on the show before, but stumbled across this track of his that's a little newer called Mesmerize, which you can go find on SoundCloud. John Teal is J-O-N-T-E-A-L. So check that out. And oh yeah, if you're new to the show, this is like for some reason your first time checking into Interverse Land, you can subscribe to it everywhere. YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play Store, everywhere else too, whatever. Just <laughs> go ahead and give it a subscribe so you don't miss the updates on what we've been doing. Check out the archive. There's a lot of talks with visionary artists and festival people, but also a ton of other things that are in completely different realms. My, Like I said at the beginning of this outro, my original intention for the show was to talk to just like heady artists and get their, get the goods on their perspective that lets them do what they do. But then I got a little, I don't know, bored with doing only one thing. And have definitely branched out a lot over the last two years in terms of topics and types of people I have conversations with. And I don't see any reason to limit that because I'm interested in all kinds of things. I'm kind of a generalist. And maybe you guys are too if you're fans of the show. So yeah, make sure you're subscribed wherever you like to get podcasts. If you're not, you could also share the show with people online or in person. That'd be super helpful. And you can leave a review on the iTunes podcast app. That's pretty cool too. If I see any review-like statements, I could even read them on the show in an outro. I've done that before, but I haven't seen any written reviews for a while. Then again, if you just leave five stars there, it's still going to be helpful because the more five stars that you get on iTunes, the more people are going to get suggested that they check out your show when they're checking out related stuff. So a lot of ways to help Interverse help me, but just listening makes me happy that you're tuning in and I'm not just talking to myself here in my office. <laughs> Because that would be a little sad. Not really too sad. I mean, you got to have a conversation with yourself. And I would love to be exploring these type of ideas, regardless of who was listening. But I do want to connect with you guys. So, so let's do that however we can. And I'll talk to you guys next week. Make sure to check out Stacey Pants' artwork. Oh, man, I forgot to say that at the beginning of the outro. If you haven't gone to Stacey's website... Definitely do that. It is linked in the show notes or find her social medias. You got to see what she's making. If you have it, if you've gotten the whole episode and haven't even checked out her art style yet, you're missing out on a big fraction of her personality. So yeah, look at Stacey Pants' art. You'll like it. Maybe even buy some art. 
She'll like that. You'll get a cool piece of treasure. It's a win-win. And remember the music I'm about to play us out with is John Teal. So you can find that in the show notes too. And I'm out of here, guys. Much love. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.